It's the 5th of April, 1943, and 79 B-17 Flying Fortresses from the US 8th Bomber Command are making their way across the English Channel. Their target is in Mortsel, in the suburbs of Antwerp. It's the Minerva car factory that has been converted into a fighter plane repair shop by the Germans. It's a beautiful clear day, good weather for a high-profile raid. It's the 50th raid of the American 8th Bomber Command against German-occupied Europe. So in the lead plane is Brigadier General Frank A. Armstrong. Approaching Ghent, the cry goes up. Bandits. The first sunny day of spring is darkened by the shadows of BF-109s from JG-26. The lead B-17 is attacked head-on. A BF-109 comes in on an attack run. With the B-17 in its sights, the pilot lets loose a volley. It's high stakes attacking a fortress head-on. But the skilled German pilots use speed and accuracy to get shots on target. Again and again, the German planes scream past the fortress, firing all the while. Flying fortresses are tough, but even they have their limits. According to Armstrong, his plane was attacked head-on at least 25 times, with the crew now injured and the plane barely flying. The lead plane reluctantly turns away for home. If you ever wondered, how does it feel to pilot a legendary B-17, well, try the closest to combat experience with War Thunder. With the game's intuitive mouse aim mode, you can fly any aircraft using only your mouse and keyboard. War Thunder brings you the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made with incredibly detailed vehicles and effects. With over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships to choose from, you'll be immersed in dynamic combined arms PvP battles like never before. With impressive graphics in 4K resolution, Authentic sound effects and beautiful music, War Thunder transports you to the front lines of combat and it's available on PC and games consoles. Get into the action of War Thunder now by clicking the link in the description. You'll receive a large free bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters and much more. Support the channel by downloading the game with the link today. Thank you. The lead plane reluctantly turns away for home. But it doesn't all go the Germans' way. Inside the B-17s, the guns are firing in all directions. As a BF-109 flies past it, it gets caught by the waste gunner. Another 109 is taken out by a tail gunner as it tries to come in from behind. Many B-17s are now streaming smoke and oil. Engines are blown, wings are shredded. The Germans are relentless. There's an explosion. Inevitably, a B-17 that can't take any more damage is critically hit and goes down. The B-17s are falling out of formation. At a German-controlled base at Duern, more planes take off, including the fast and well-armed FW-190. Back on the B-17s, they're horrified to see even more German planes join in. There's even more of them! 190 on your tail. I got it! A waste gunner takes out another German plane and the inevitable flak starts up. In the words of one pilot, Lieutenant Birch, suddenly a burst of flak knocked out our oxygen system. No sooner had this happened than an enemy fighter made a close attack and knocked out the number one engine. Knowing we couldn't stay in formation, I pulled out to head for home. Another FW-190 came in and hit our number three engine, but it didn't go out altogether the number two engine had its oil line shot out, but it kept running. The bombers have Norden bomb sites, special targeting equipment to drop bombs with great precision. It's a clear day, this should be a good bombing run. The flak is causing problems, but it's not the worst many of these experienced crews have seen. And so, approaching Mortsel at 3.30 in the afternoon, the 64 remaining B-17s darken the skies. 599 1,000-pound bombs are dropped by the B-17s, alongside 216 500-pound bombs dropped by B-24 Liberators. The planes turn and head for home. A job well done. Four of the 79 B-17s went down, but that's not to be the only tragedy of the day. As the bombs hurtle down towards their target, they get closer and closer to the factory, 
We don't know if it was due to navigation error, bombardier's error, or the battle that had pushed the planes out of formation. What we do know is that the bombs were dropped several seconds later than intended. For high altitude bombing, that's a huge difference. From the massive number of bombs dropped, just four hit the target. But it's enough to cause mayhem. A severe blaze erupts, fueled by a direct hit onto the rubber storage that ignites and generates choking smoke. Many hundreds of workers, Belgian men and women, become a casualty of the war. That wasn't to be the end of the tragedy, as most of the bombs landed further east on civilians. Schools. Homes. 936 were killed, with 1,342 injured. Much of Mortsel lies in ruins. Radio London reported on the evening of April 5th, the attack produced excellent results. However, the German press agency were quick to capitalize on the disaster and wrote on April the 6th, direct hits and the housing blocks caused fire and destruction and inflicted bloody losses on the civilian population. The Belgian ambassador to the United States, Count Robert van den Straten Ponhoz, made a formal complaint to which the US government responded. The United States government deeply regrets any loss of Belgian life incurred on the occasion of the April 5th attack upon military targets in the Antwerp area. It hastens to assure the Belgian government that there was no intention to disregard principles previously agreed upon and outlined it in the ambassador's note under reference. The targets in question were industrial establishments known to be of great importance to the Axis war effort and it has been ascertained that normally adequate precautions were taken in this attack to avoid dropping bombs outside the target area. Today, the site has been largely redeveloped, but the shadows of the old factory are still to be seen. This was a difficult film to make and different from what we usually do. We were in Antwerp when we heard of this story. American air crew lost their lives fighting for freedom. Those freedoms they fought for allow us to talk about events such as these which did not go to plan. The Germans managed to get the factory running and repairing planes after just a few weeks. <laughs>